get out. I don't like this lighting at all. Good morning. Hello, everybody. Hello. It's 10 o'clock. Here's some early church comers. Welcome this morning. Hallelujah. Whoops. Got that strap hanging out. How are y'all doing? Good morning on this snowy morning. Good morning, Anthony from Florida, who doesn't have no snow. <laughs> you missed out. That's what you get when you move away. You don't get the snow, or you hope you don't get the snow. Sometimes Florida gets snow. Good morning, Mary Ann. How are you this morning? Hi, Jackie, Tammy. Hi, family. How you doing? Daniel, you got to tune in on Tuesday night for story time. I've been missing you. Tune in. 7 o'clock Tuesday night. I've been going live. This week I won't be able to. Good morning, Emak Pari. You too, guys. Get your kids tuned in on Tuesday night for story time. Morning. Man, you guys are coming in so fast. I can't keep up with it all. I'm getting dizzy. Yeah. Good morning, Phil Dean. Happy you're doing good. Morning, Ackerman family. Glad you're doing good. Morning, Pex. Hi, Taiyi. Say hi to your girls and your son for me. Welcome this morning. I just seen uh, Krakowski come up and they have a new house they're going to be moving into in just a few days. So yay, yay for them. Hi, Cheryl. Praying for you. Hallelujah. Morning, Danielle. I bet you got a lot of snow where you live. Hi, Dale. Hallelujah. Hi, Owens family. Hallelujah. Try to get Nate on Tuesday night. This week I'm going to be taping um, my story time because I'm actually going to be taping in the church that night. So um, that didn't work out. So anyway, hi, Jamie Lee. How is your family all doing? Hallelujah. I'm trying to read you guys, but you are flying. Hallelujah. Diane, I'm glad you made it to church this morning. Welcome. Morning, Patricia. Joanne, nice to hear from you this morning. We've been missing you in church, but we understand. Hello. Hello, hello Ola. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Kitty. How you doing? Happy birthday to Sister Saunders, she says. Hallelujah. Jack and Sandy, nice to have you aboard. Happy uh, Your Dilemma's Over. Kaises, hallelujah. Hey, Nate, I'm glad you smiled big. Mwah! There's a kiss for you and your sister. Hallelujah. Good morning, Jenny Harris. How's the kids doing? Get them to tune in on Tuesday nights, too, for story time. It's a great time to be together. Well, good morning, Donna Brunt. How are you today? My husband says, thank you for the joke. We shared it with him. So we are in, you are in our prayers. And please remember, Sister Donna, in your prayers, she's uh, facing some serious illness. But we have a God that says he'll take care of it for us. And that is great, isn't it? Hallelujah. So all of you that um, have tuned in this morning, um, one of the things that I really, really like um, when we broadcast is um, when the families that have children all come on and uh, we get to watch them, you know, do their stories and and uh, fun things like that. Well, as you know, you don't have any, I don't have any of our own children. And now that we don't even have a dog, um, I don't really have a whole lot that I, you know, can put on. Um, I could have Jerry come and, I guess, do his memorized scripture, but that would be a little <laughs> weird, don't you think? But this morning, good morning, Sister Vera and Donna um, and Gloria and Tamara. Good morning, everybody. Yolanda, nice to have you this morning. But this morning, I have a surprise for all of you. Because this morning I do have a special guest that I would like to bring on. And to be honest with you, um, she's not uh, my little girl, but she sure does act like it sometimes. It's funny how roles reverse, isn't it? 
And so, um, you know, when you're younger, they boss you around. And when they get older, we boss them around or try to anyway. Um, but this morning, I am just so happy and uh, so thankful to God. And so my mama is going to join us this morning. And thank you for all of the happy birthday wishes to her. But she's right here with me. So mama, if you can just slide in here a little bit more, we'll make you the center. So here she is. You got to get in here till we can see I'm your face. Short. You're too short? Yeah. Like yeah, well... My chair is not high enough. The Lord uh, um, didn't make you taller. What can I say? Just slide over a little more and we'll catch you. Just come in angle. There you go. There I am. Here know. is That's my birthday girl. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she cute? It's so nice She's to be adorable. doing the broadcast. There's Nancy saying happy birthday, Sister mm -hmm. Saunders, from her and Galen. Mm -hmm. There you go. Here you go. So you can... Take a moment to wish her a happy mm -hmm. birthday today. She is, uh, God has just been good to her. So um, maybe you'd like to thank them for wishing you a um, happy birthday. Can you read what they're saying? Because I can read them to you if you can't. I can't from here, no. Okay, happy birthday, Mama Saunders from Carol Burrell, the Owens family, Donna Hayes. Here they come, Diane Berrio. Pauline Morris, Danielle, Chrislyn, Tracy O'Neill, Marian Smith, they're all Vera Mancini, they're all coming in. I'm so grateful to God. He's kept Mama healthy and um, happy that she's in church. Uh, she helped found the church, and so it's great to have her on board. So you want to talk to some of them this morning? Here's Mike. Uh, he's new to our church. Welcome this morning, Mike, Sister Mac, Emily, on and on. So um, just send out thank yous to them, I guess, Mom. I guess so. <laughs> the line's not going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, thank you very much for all your good wishes. And God has surely blessed me and been good to me. Yes, sir. And you know the best thing about it? 88 years ago today... I popped into this world and it's never been the same since. No. <laughs> so no. have a great day, everybody. Have a wonderful Christmas. And we are survivors. The Lord said he'd keep us at all things. That's exactly. And what that's he said. what he's done for me. And that's what he's doing for me. And just praise God. And you always have a smile to make somebody happy. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Love you all. My mama is... Um is a great example because um, so many people, when they reach a certain age, they think life is over. Some it starts at 40, um, some it hits them at 60, some at 70, and they decide to quit. But my mama has never, ever decided to quit. And uh, just the other day, she was in helping pack Haiti barrels. And She's a lady on the move for God, and COVID has really put a crimp in her walk. <laughs> but she's found ways to still encourage, still strengthen people. And many of you that are coming up this morning, she's um, she's called you and encouraged you and prayed with you, and God has answered prayer. So it's exciting, isn't it? So I'm very happy today, me and Jerry, to have my mama with us for her birthday day dinner today and uh, to share happy birthdays with her as well. So um, yes, she does. She always looks good and she's an awesome young lady. That's true, Lori Chokas. She is. Happy birthday from the Mancinis and they say mother and grandma Saunders and she is. She truly, truly is. And uh, she loves um, playing with her great, great grandchild. <laughs> Um, and, uh, it's just, it's great. Um, so we're happy to have you on this morning, mama mm -mm. <laughs> from everyone there. Just kissed her for you. Happy birthday. So we can't sing to her in church, but your wishes have rang out just as great. So God bless you, mama. Thank See you. you in a few have minutes. A good day. All right. <laughs> and dinner smells good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sister. 
Sister Linda said, please don't start off the broadcast by what you're eating because Tony then starts saying, oh, that sounds good. Can we have this? Can we have that? And she goes, and then he doesn't pay attention to the rest of the meeting. So I'm not telling you what we're having so that I can spare Linda that dilemma with her husband. But dinner does smell good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, this morning, thank you for all of your uh, well wishes to my mama. I'm uh, just really happy God has kept her healthy. And when she has her checkups, they they all come in thinking she's going to have what the statistics say. And they soon find out she doesn't. She's a healthy little lady. Hallelujah. So happy, happy to have her in my life and to uh, be a part of her. She's certainly been a blessing to our home and uh, a blessing to so many of you. So thank you for all of your well wishes. I just thought that that would be nice to bring her on. And we all do not think she's shy, but she was a little shy. She was like, I don't know, but she did it. <laughs> she's a good lady and God truly has kept her. Well, this morning, we thank you for your giving. And there's so many ways that you give uh, not just of your tithes and your offerings, and those certainly are important. And they're important because they bring the blessings of God to you. Um, God's word told us, if you bring your tithes and your offerings into the storehouse, it brings equality. And so lots of times there's people that have needs and we can't share them because they're personal but um, God has been good and you have helped a lot, a lot of people, some that you don't even know about, but you have been there to help them. And also in your prayers, and I just thank you so much for the prayers, uh, keeping your prayer tower hours, praying extra. Sister Agnes just uh, called in, met a couple of men and began to share with them and they begin to weep and cry, and she led them to Christ. That's all a part of giving too, isn't it? The phone calls that you make and just a smile to someone to just brighten their day is so important, isn't it? It's all a part of that giving process. So we're just happy today for your giving, and uh, we've been through this, but if you're watching us this morning, and uh, you want to make a donation, if you hit that C button down there, Sister Lauren has been gracious enough to put that information on there. Uh, you can go to Easy Ties and sign up, uh, put your zip code in or the name of the church and choose us. You can, uh, of course, mail it in, P.O. Box 4017, Manchester, Connecticut. And uh, you can also go to the church website also and put it in. And um, thank you for helping with Worldwide. There's still time to help them to reach their uh, 15,000 goal. And um, so we're just excited today, um, excited about all that God is doing. And uh, again, grateful to you for your giving, your prayers, your time. It, it's making a huge, huge difference in people's lives. And so also tomorrow night, Monday night, from 7 to 8 o'clock, um, they're going to be collecting your empty bottles at the Worldwide Lighthouse Missions warehouse door. All you have to do is pull into the parking lot, swing around. Someone will be there to take the bags out of your car. You don't even have to get out of your car. Uh, just make sure if you're opening your trunk, you don't have people's Christmas presents in there because we could end up taking those out of the trunk if we don't know what they are. <laughs> just teasing. But sometimes I have stuff in, in my trunk that um, is not bottles. So tomorrow night, 7 to 8, all those extra bottles that you collected over the holidays or just in your routine of life, I know we've got a great big, huge black garbage bag um, ready to go. So this will be the last opportunity for this year 
uh, to get those bottles in, and then they're going to be doing another one just at the 1st of January, okay, to help you get them out of your homes. If you have neighbors, friends, um, just load up your cars with bottles. Um, I believe, don't quote me, but I think it was like $235 or $55 um, for us to be able to reach last year's goal which is just amazing to me. So I'm believing we're going to surpass that and uh, even do more. So uh, this Monday, 7 to 8, uh, you can bring your bottles, your cans um, to the warehouse. And then this week we'll be getting out um, those bottles to the Redemption Center and uh, seeing what we come up with. Our kids just get so excited and they thank you, uh, Jubilee Tabernacle kids and also our little pioneers, they started helping us. We cannot wait to get back doing that, but they're excited to um, help missions with the bottle drive. So you're helping them to reach their goals as, as well. So that's exciting. And also we've had a few people uh, asking how they could get their coins in for the end of the year. So also tomorrow night, seven to eight, we will be collecting your coins that you have saved throughout the year. You can bring those as well and drop them off. And uh, that will help you um, to give you your answer of what do I do with my coins that I always brought in at the end of the year. We're sorry, um, we won't be able, you'll have to like cut it a couple weeks short, but uh, that's okay. You'll um, you'll manage all right. So, um, so remember, tomorrow night, 7 to 8, 7 to 8 o'clock, bring your bottles, your cans, all of your redemption uh, items. And also, if you have collected coins, um, throughout the year and you want to bring them in, you can drop them off also when you drop off your bags, okay? So um, looking forward to seeing um, everyone tomorrow night. Make sure you check into Worldwide Sight. They had a wonderful time with um, Pastor Nicholas and I'm happy um, we, we uh, did some work with them. And now um, I go on and I get to watch him preach in Africa. So that's exciting, isn't it? The church is just booming, doing good. The school is doing good. And Pastor Gustavo was on sharing the goodness of God of what's happening. And our uh, worker from Mac was on. A great, great time. So if you missed that, go into Worldwide Sight and uh, you'll be able to see it. Also, given Tuesday, they were packing barrels and so lots of good things going on, isn't there, to help the needs of people. So uh, we're just grateful, grateful, grateful to God for his goodness to us. So this morning, I'm going to um, let you go. I have a young man who um, just keeps telling me, Pastor, if you need me, um, I'm here. I'm ready to go. And so this young man, he is raring to go. So we're going to get him on and he's going to minister the word of God to you this morning so that he'll stop bugging me about preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, he's excited about the word. So this morning, my wonderful husband is going to come in and we're going to do a switcheroo. It's been really, really nice seeing all of you this morning. So happy you have been with us. And we're looking for God to just take this word this morning and pour it into your heart. Be an open vessel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, you go through the days of life and you just find yourself getting empty. Last night I was working diligently my lips started getting drier and drier. I put on chapstick. It wasn't enough. And I realized that I had not been drinking water most of the day. Sorry, Lauren. Lauren's always trying to make sure I get my water in. But 
I went and got me a couple of big glasses of water and begin to just fill up. And this morning, I believe that there's a lot of us, we, our lips are getting parched and all we need, all we need to keep us going, hallelujah, is the water of the word. And it's going to come this morning to you. So just, you know, open up. Don't, don't close yourself off. Open up and just say, God, fill me up this morning to overflowing. Just let it flow into me so that it can flow out again. Hallelujah. That's the great thing about coming together and just working together and fellowshipping together because it strengthens us. And so we may not be like right in front of each other this morning, but our hearts are. And when we connect to God, we're right together. Hallelujah. We are not alone. Hallelujah. I love that song. I am not alone because God he goes before me. Hallelujah. Just excited about that. So we're going to do a switcheroo this morning. Mm, love all of you bunches and bunches. Make sure if you're watching this morning and you have children, you get them tuned in on Tuesday night, seven o'clock for story time. And even you young at hearts, so you're welcome to come on board too. And so God bless you this morning as Reverend Kalinsky comes to share God's word with you today. You ready, Daddy? I'm ready. Okay, here he comes. God bless you. Love you all. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wendy says, I'm praying. My dog is barking. Okay. Well, praise the Lord, Sister Wendy. Uh, that's Mom's. I took her water by mistake because I thought I left mine. And it's funny because uh, she talked about drinking water. I have a glass up here that I had put here already. And uh, I took my mother-in-law's by mistake at the bottom of the stairs thinking it was mine. So I'm going to be well hydrated. God bless you, Sister Joan. Amen. Sister Ronke. Amen. So good to see all your names up here. You know, Sister Emily, I was thinking the other day, driving down the road for just a little bit, how, how I miss being in the house of God with all of you, you know, worshiping the Lord and, oh, gathering around the altars. And But we're going to do that at this time in our homes. And we've been here before, we know. God bless you, Sister Landry. So nice to see your name up there. And happy birthday to Sister Saunders. Amen. Brother Ed Hamlin, God bless you, my brother. You know, I'm not used to wearing a tie now that I haven't been in one so long, and it's a little warm up here, so, ah, thank God for a glass of water. Sister Katie, thank you. We're praying for you, too. Well, how many, how many of you know how many days there is till Christmas? Sister Irma and Sister Danielle, Sister Janet, God bless you all. Amen. Sister Dora Pecon, if I said it right. Is that Pecon? No. I don't know really how you say it, Sister Dora. Anyway, I've seen Sister Dora forever. Amen. Well, what a wonderful time we have here in the presence of God and, and uh, uh, just being together one more time. Good morning, Sister Lori Chokitos. Yes, Sister Jenny, God bless you and all my brothers and sisters here. Yes, the mother of the church, Sister Saunders, is 87 days young, years young. Amen. She, I don't know if they said that, so I'm the one who has to say it. 87 years young. Praise the Lord. Oh, Brother Steve told me to relax and take my tie off. Thank you, Brother Steve. I appreciate that. Amen. Well, glory to God. You know, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in the natural, as how many are enjoying the snow we have outside. Reverend Lottenbach, watch yourself. Yes, the snow outside. It's beautiful. However, we've had a birch tree in the middle of our yard for many, many moons and it's laying down right now. It's come up many times. It's just bent over, but I've never seen it bent that far over. Amen. So well, we hope that's going to come back. If not, 
it will make its way into my woodshed. Well, it's an honor to be with you here this morning. And uh, praise God. Sister Judy says, I love the snow. Amen. Well, Sister Betty, sometimes we think we're a little older than we are, but we're actually not. Uh, 1933, do the math. Bingo. 87. Anyway, so good to see so many names coming up here that we haven't seen one another in so long. I was thinking of a brother the other day, and finally I was able to get his number from his son and uh, gave him a call, and it was just nice talking to him, you know, and it's, it's wonderful to do that, to be able to reach out to our brothers and sisters who are shut in, or we just haven't seen them and we're missing them. So give everybody a call that comes to your heart, and we are the hands, the feet, and the mouth of God. Amen. Reverend Lottenbeck says he's making snow angels out there. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm excited about this message. You know, it. Uh, <laughs> God has a sense of humor. And uh, let's see if I can move that a little bit more. Good morning, Sister Cheryl and all you. Hello to everybody. We're going to get into the Word of God now. And we're going to go to God in prayer. So let's do that. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day to worship you. Thank you for another day to love you. Oh, God, just being appreciative of who you are and of all that you mean to us, how much you love us in the midst of a world with billions of people. Yet, Lord, you still love each and every one of us. It's and this little brain of ours, it's so hard to fathom that with all that's going on in every life, in every place, and our minds can't even fathom how vast this world is, yet you love every one of your creation. God, take this message that you've, as the woman of God asked me the other night, would you like to minister in the morning? And I agreed to do it. She didn't know earlier in the day, you know, I'm going to talk about it, but our, in our own thought processes, Lord, we say things, we think things, but yet you help us overcome every hurdle because you created us in your image and you love us and you have a plan for us. And God, your desires for us, God, are wonderful and great and beyond. God, if we can just fathom everything you have for us, and we just love you today and ask you to bless every heart and every mind and let us just grab a nugget from your word today to help us along life's journey. God, doing the will of God for you, we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, can you say amen, church? You know, uh, <laughs> sometimes I'll get ahead of myself here. But sometimes, you know... Uh, because of our thinking and our thoughts, and uh, hello, Brother Mike Craven, God bless you. And, you know, we say we're not going to do something, and we, we uh, go to our natural understanding, and, uh, but uh, we don't serve God with our natural understanding. Can anybody say amen there? It's just Agnes, you know. But a simple little Christmas message, if you want to call it that, being in... Uh, I know we don't celebrate holidays and what have you in this world, but we do celebrate Christmas as the birth of Christ and uh, God sending a Savior into the world. And uh, I want to title this here. I, th I think Christmas season, it's a wonderful time of the year to be able to minister the gospel because there are so many things you can talk about. Uh, of course, God has to quicken it to your heart that that's what he wants. And uh, I want to talk to you about a wonderful Christmas message. I am redeemed. Can you say that to yourself and to your neighbor? I am redeemed. Oh my, it just feels good to hear that. Sounds good to hear that. I am redeemed. Yes, doesn't matter about any feelings, any thoughts, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So my question is, what is redemption? 
What is redemption? That's a good question. Anybody want to give it a thought in a few words? What is redemption? I'm glad you asked. Redemption is a releasing of affected, E-F-F-E-C-T-E-D. It is a releasing affected by payment of a ransom. It means deliverance. Oh, my. It means liberation procured by the payment of a ransom. Oh, my God looked down upon his creation and knew that we needed a Savior. He knew that we needed help. He knew that we could not live pleasing in his sight without a Redeemer coming to help us. He had to send help our way. And, you know, when the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, Verses 8 through 10. Romans 5, 8 through 10 is some wonderful scriptures. I've got several here this morning. And I'm going to take my time and just talk to you. Is that all right? I want to talk to you from the heart of God. Romans 5 through 8 says this. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. <laughs> oh, my. But God commendeth. It means God put his stamp of approval on his love. He stamped his love, so to speak, toward us. And that while we, we were even yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified, amen, by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Much more than being now justified. Justified means made righteous. It means being made free. Much more than being now made righteous and free by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies... We were reconciled to God. Oh, my good gracious. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Think about it. God's very life in the body of Christ, the life of God, the blood flow of God, because he didn't have a natural father, the Holy Ghost was his father. Amen. He was, it was an immaculate conception. It was a miraculous birth. Uh, he didn't have a natural father. There was no father's blood flowing through his veins. It was the Holy Ghost. It was heaven's blood, Vekabashaya, flowing through a human vessel. And God seen we needed saving. And so he sent us a savior. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. What's it mean, reconciled? It means we will return back in favor with God. That's a shouting moment right there, somebody. Oh, uh, maybe you had a rough week. I don't know. But that's a good moment to lift your hands and give God some praise right there. We were reconciled. We will return back into favor with God. Now, come on, put a smile on. Say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory, Lord God. We love you today, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We were brought back into favor with God. And we're saved by his life. He knew. <laughs> he knew we needed saving. We needed saving from our sins. And we needed saving from ourselves. Come on, somebody. Yes, I know we think we got it all together all the time, but if you look at that man in the mirror, he'll tell you another story. Come on, you got to get up in the morning and look at that man in the mirror. Come on. Yeah, we need God. Come on, praise God right there. Sister Donna's doing one of these numbers. Come on now. Sister Elaine, God bless you. I got to read it again for if. Well, come on, read it with me. When we were enemies... We were even his enemies. We were reconciled. God laid out the plan. 
he returned us back into favor with him by the death of his son. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. All we have to do is accept what Christ did for us and turn our life over to him. You see, we can't leave off that repentance part when we come to God. If you're listening and you're not saved today, or maybe you started the journey but you're struggling, there is a repentance where you have to lay your life down. We're going to talk about it in a little bit here. But we lay it all at his feet, and then you'll find new life in Christ. God himself will witness to you that he has met you in your earnest desire to know him and to walk with him. And he'll come to you right where you are, in your home, in your car, at work, on a break. Amen. God will show you how real he is because he died just for you and me. In the midst of a world of billions of people, God died on the cross for you and me. Romans 3 and 24 says this, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Being justified, made right, freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. There is nothing anybody in this life can do to earn your way into heaven or said another way, to earn yourself into the favor of God, it comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Why don't you high-five your neighbor, say it comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brought back into harmony. Thank you for helping me preach, Brother Arthur. We're brought back into harmony with God. Amen. The turmoil, the enmity in the heart is taken away. Yes, sir. Listen to this other scripture. Ephesians 1 and 17 says this, in whom, now listen, anytime God stresses things more than once, he's driving a point home. Amen. I got Reverend, Reverend Sanchez in the amen corner. Thank you, my brother. Amen. Love everybody out there today. We're together virtually, but in the spirit, we're together. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 17 says, in whom we have, tell your neighbor, we have, that means we have it right now, in whom we have redemption, glory to God, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Ah, Ephesians 1 and 17, in whom we have, we already have it, redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Yes, Sister Cheryl, we have it right now. Tell your neighbor, we have it right now. It's here. It's a now thing. Just claim it. Just walk in it. And many times the preaching of the word puts us in way of remembrance to show us and remind us of what we actually possess in Christ. It's like taking a drink of water. It's refreshing to your spirit. To be refreshed in the spirit to know that, hey, look, I'm not where I was yesterday. Today's a brand new day. I don't live in the failures or anything of yesterday. Yesterday's gone. Today is the only day we have. Tomorrow's not promised. So today you can smile and praise God and love God and worship God and just be happy in him. And yesterday's gone. Don't even let your mind go there. Hallelujah. Now, we just read Ephesians 1 and 17. Listen to this. Colossians 1 and 14. Oh my, I think it sounds quite familiar. In whom we have, <laughs> in whom we have redemption. He says it again in another epistle. Through his blood. And he adds on, even the forgiveness of sins. Oh my, in whom we have, settle it therefore. Know it in your heart. Know it in your spirit. Hey, don't wrestle with it. Don't wrestle with your flesh anymore. So you dropped the ball yesterday. Pick it back up, so to speak, and go on with God. 
in whom we have redemption through his blood. Nothing we've done of ourselves through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now listen to this preacher for a moment. We cannot forget the fact that we are saved. Tell your neighbor, you can't forget you're saved. We are free right now. We are made righteous in the sight of God. Therefore, we can't lose sight ourselves no matter how we may feel. That's right. I'll read it again. We cannot forget the fact that we are saved, we are free, we are made righteous in the sight of Almighty God. Therefore, we can't lose sight no matter how you and I may feel. We don't always do or say the right thing. Come on, somebody. Look at that man in the mirror for a moment. We don't gauge our salvation by how we feel. Somebody needs to hear that today. We don't gauge our salvation by how we feel. We don't always feel saved. If you don't believe it, ask somebody that's been walking this journey for many years, and they will concur. We don't always feel saved. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. Amen. Amen. We don't always do or say you know, even you, I'm just going to be on. I'm going to be real with you. Amen. I'm, is it okay if I'm just real with you this morning? Because there's a human side of us. Nobody heard me. I was, I was in a store for just a short time the other day, and I was frustrated about something, and I said something under my breath, and I stopped, and I immediately almost broke into tears and said, God, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. I don't even know why. I said that, and then you don't start to feel good, and I'm just going to be real with you. We're, we're human. And then I went on to say, Lord, I don't even need to preach right now. I said, someone else can do that. I don't even want feelings. I, I don't even feel like preaching. Isn't it something? God taps into the woman of God, says, you want to preach in the morning? My first thought was, God, you're funny. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, he's just reminding me. We don't walk by our feelings. We don't always say or do the right thing. And uh, it's okay, we're human. You hear me today? We're human. I wish we always said everything right. Uh, I wish we always spoke with such a an anointing that... Everybody you walk by just got slayed out, or they broke out in a song, or, oh, look at that Christian. No. <laughs> look at that man in the mirror. <laughs> God didn't call angels to be saved. He called you. He called you and I. He called his creation and made a way for us. You see, you may, you may have to repent over something like I did in the store or apologize to someone or simply change a way of thinking that you've been thinking that does not line up with the word of God. Come on now. You may have to repent. You may have to apologize to someone. You may have to humble yourself and it's all right. It's all right to walk humbly. Micah said it you know, to walk humbly before God and uh, make sure that our thoughts line up to the word of God. Amen. It's always a putting off of this old man. I'm going to talk about it. Think about this. It came to me while I was studying. I'm sure, put yourself back in time for just a little bit, back in Jesus's day. I'm sure when Judas betrayed Jesus, all the disciples just had a wonderful time dealing with that situation. Think about it. They were just rejoicing, right? Uh, I'm sure when Jesus betrayed Jesus, all the disciples had to work through their humanity, their human feelings, uh, 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 the emotions that rose up inside of them, the situations around them that was around them. When this happened, they had to deal with these things that brother Judas 
my brother had just betrayed the Lord and they're taking him away. And, and, but they were still saved. They were still saved. But they had to deal with their humanity. Thank God. Come on, church. Thank God right there. Capital letters. Thank you, Jesus, that we are not saved by our feelings or by our emotions. We are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ, and we're not gauged our salvation by our ups and downs of life. They're going to come. They're going to go. Uh, we're going to deal with them. It doesn't change the fact that you and I are not saved. Glory to God. I'm preaching to the devil right now. Devil, we're saved by the blood of the Lamb. I'm not saved by my feelings or the little ill will thoughts or the ugliness you try to put in our minds as Christians. No, 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 no. I'm saved through the blood of Christ and I'm saved no matter what comes across our pathway. They had to deal with their emotions and their feelings that they were coming to take their Lord away. And uh, I'm sure it wasn't easy. But I love this next scripture here. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I, <laughs> I am crucified with Christ. Come on, turn there with me. Galatians, I'll, I'll give you a moment to open your Bibles. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I love this here. One of my all-time favorite scriptures. Besides Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Come on. Come on, somebody. Let's read that again. Make it personal. I am my old man. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, not the fleshly me, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, <laughs> who loved me in spite of how I feel at times who love me in spite of all the emotions that may come across our brains at times. Amen. Who loved me and gave himself. When I was yet an enemy of God, he still loved me and made a way for me and made a way for you in spite of ourselves. He loved me. He loved you. To be crucified with Christ. I'm going to break it down for you. And, for, and I love hearing it again because it, it's helped me. To be crucified with Christ means that spiritually, I lay my old man, I lay my old nature upon the cross. And now I live by faith in what Jesus Christ has already done for me. And now the word of God dictates to my fleshly man how I ought to live my life. I'm going to read that again. To be crucified with Christ means that spiritually, I choose to lay down my old man, my old nature, upon the cross as he laid his body. And now I live by faith in what Christ, what Jesus Christ has already done for me. And now the word of God dictates to my fleshly man, how I ought to live my daily life. Can you give God a smile right there? Oh, glory to God. Thayer's lexicon, you're going to like this. I loved it. Thayer's lexicon says it this way. Listen closely. By the death of Christ upon the cross, I have become utterly estranged. 
Let me read that so I can read it better. By the death of Christ upon the cross, I have become utterly estranged from, dead to, my former habit of feeling and action. Oh, you got to get this. By the death of Christ upon the cross, I, myself, I have become utterly estranged. I've separated myself. I'm estranged from, I'm dead to my former habit of feeling and actions. I'm dead to the feelings of the natural man, or we ought to be, we must be, to show forth Christ in this hour. He came to save us from our sins, and he came to save us from ourselves, and he came to save us from how we feel about walking with him at times, and how we feel about others around us, and this natural man, he just runs amok with all these thoughts that come our way, but we must wrestle them down, and oh, glory to God, we must go ahead, amen, and realize that I'm dead to this old man. I'm utterly estranged. I'm dead to those feelings. I'm dead to this old way to act. I won't respond with hate. I won't respond and act the way I used to before I got saved. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, my. Romans 6 through 7. Romans chapter 6. 6 through 7 says it like this, knowing this, in other words, get it, understand it, knowing this, know it, that our old man is crucified with him, <laughs> that the body of sin, that's the old man, might be destroyed, that henceforth, from now on, we should not serve sin. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Yes, yes, yes. Know this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he or she that is dead, is free from sin. Glory to God. I'm free today by the blood of Christ. All oh, the thoughts come, the emotions come, the feelings come, but I just put them aside because I'm dead to that. Come on, somebody. Tell someone I'm dead to my old man. Yes, I don't give in to that old man. Oh, my. And listen, listen to this. Psalm chapter 71, verse 23. Oh my, the psalmist says, my lips, my lips can't do it for you, but my lips shall greatly rejoice. That's not all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm just grateful today. Come on, somebody. <laughs> yes, my lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, O God. Why? And my soul, which thou has redeemed. Oh, I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to him I now resign. What? The old man. I resign the old way, for I have been redeemed. Come on, Reverend Sanchez. Greatly rejoice. Yes, my lips shall greatly rejoice. When I sing unto thee, O oh my, and my soul, which thou has redeemed. <laughs> oh, you ought to put that one on your refrigerator. <laughs> put it on your toaster. Put it on your dashboard. Oh, my. When thoughts and things come, just sing unto the Lord. I read something the other day that a couple of preachers, one of them had posted, you know, don't let the devil steal your praise. You might say, no, 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 you know, you know, you can't always go by the exterior of somebody. You may feel that they're always on cloud nine, amen. You don't know what's going on on the inside. People may shout on the outside, but they're not living it on the inside. Come on now. It doesn't mean these things don't come, but you just go ahead and don't let the devil steal your praise. And it's something we all have to work through. I'm guilty as charged. 
But today is a brand new day. Why? I'm reminded I've been redeemed. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, tell your neighbor, tell yourself, I'm redeemed. Oh, glory, I'm redeemed. Doesn't matter how I feel. Doesn't matter about yesterday. I'm redeemed, and that's all that matters. And I've got something to talk about. Amen. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee in my soul, which thou hast redeemed. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, and I'm almost winding this up here. But my goodness, it's just so rich today. For you, I'll never look at this scripture again, the way I've always, I've read it so many times. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is your mind, which are God's. It belongs to God. Now, let me read it to you again. For you are bought with a price, redeemed. He shed his blood. We represent him now. You are bought with a price. You're redeemed. He bought you with his blood. Therefore, it's your responsibility. It's my responsibility to glorify God in this body even when things around me, the old man wants to rise up and spew things out and say things or whatever, give a certain look or a certain action. No, no, no. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I'm redeemed. I'm bought with a price. I'm glad that I am. How about you? I'm redeemed by love divine. I'm redeemed, therefore it's my responsibility to glorify God in my body and in my spirit. In closing, Psalms 107 verse 2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are there any redeemed folk out there today? Whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Oh, translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Think about it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom God, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, from sin, which has so bound our lives. Amen. If all of us would just shout a few things up to God, amen, or speak a few things to God, or just hum or whisper a few things of God, what he brought us from. You know, another word for redeemed is delivered. Deliverance. He delivered us from things that bound us that we had no control over. The sin which so easily had beset us, amen, no longer does. Oh, glory to God. He redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. When the enemy sees you're covered in the blood, he can't, woo, he can't touch you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honey, I felt that in my hand. I certainly did. Whom God has redeemed us. From the hand of the enemy, he has no more hold on you and I. Glory to God. I've been redeemed. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a shout of praise right there. Glory. Romans 3, 23 and 24. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And once again, but God in Romans 5, 8, and 9, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. I am redeemed. How about you today? Come on, can you put your hands up and just give God some praise for a moment? Thank you. Thank you. Come on, give him some praise. Thank him right there. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your redemption, God. That's the greatest 
Christmas gift to this world, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed from sin. I'm redeemed from myself. I'm re redeemed from the old life. I'm redeemed from the old way of living. That's not me anymore. We might say we've heard it, O oh God, that I may not be what I ought to be, but I'm not what I used to be. Oh, come on, somebody. Glory to God. If you're looking in faith today for God to do something for you, you have a need in your life, whatever it may be. I know there's sickness out there and there's people that have lost jobs and people that have gained jobs. And so let's look on the bright side as well. But whatever the need may be, you don't have to get into everything. All you have to do is just put down, I have a need with finances or I need healing or whatever it is. And in a moment, we're going to call upon God and his shed blood. Amen. We'll be there for your healing. And through his blood, we have all the benefits of the cross and everything that heaven has at our disposal. God, God will have it for you and I. Amen. See, people don't need a piece of your mind or a piece of my mind. They need a piece of the cross. Come on, somebody. They need a piece of the cross of Calvary, what God came and did for them personally. People are hungry for God. And amen. We need to tell them that Christmas is all about redemption. That God, amen, you know, it was at Matthew 1 and 23, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins, amen, and bring peace and joy, amen, on the inside of our hearts and our minds. No matter what's going on, you can have the peace and the joy of God, amen. So whatever the needs may be out there, amen, people for surgery and asking for restoration, and God knows your heart. Amen. Just take a moment and say to God, God, because this is between you and him, God, you know my need. You know we need this. It's either finances or healing or deliverance or whatever. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, by the authority of your word. Oh, God, I always thought there was around 4,000 promises in your word. I read the other day. I've never looked them all up. But some man stated there's over 37,000 promises. And if there is, well, glory be to God. It's a whole lot more than this little mind thought. God, we call upon every prophet of Isaiah, every promise in your word. Whatever it is, God, meet it through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ right now by faith. God, we speak to every need be met in the name of Jesus it's been bought through the blood of Christ, and God will thank you and will look with eyes of faith because we're the redeemed of the Lord, and you love us. Oh, God, you said you'd give men for us, that you would do whatever, God. Ask that your joy may be filled. Fill the joy in the hearts of your people, oh, God, with these needs to be met, and we'll give you all the glory, the honor, and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to thee I now resign. Why? Because I have been redeemed. Amen. Can you tell your neighbor, tell your family? Amen. Point to one another. I am redeemed. We love you, folks. Amen. We'll be coming back tonight. God bless you, Brother Tony. So good to see you there, my brother. Amen. Haven't seen you in a while. God bless you, Sister. I like Sister Emily Manchester. Not everybody can say, I'm Mrs. Manchester. Come on now. <laughs> hey, don't let the joy of the Lord slip out of your life. Amen. Whatever you got to do. Hey, if you've got to go to the mirror and laugh at yourself, I've got a plaque downstairs. It said uh, something to this effect. Life can be too serious at times, so if you can't laugh at yourself, call me up. I'll laugh at you. Come on now. <laughs> Find the joy in life through Christ. Enjoy life. Look at a flower. Smell it. Enjoy the snow on a fence post. We've got, my wife has done a wonderful job outside. We have, uh, I, I'm going to try to turn, I can't, turn, yeah, let me see here. I'm going to try to turn it if I don't lose you. And just out the side of this window, I want you to see the fence post. It's got bows on it. It's got reefs on it. It's got lights that light up. 
Amen. It looks beautiful. So you might say, well, why show you that? Look, there's beauty in that. It's something to enjoy. Come on now. I uh, know we, you know, it's, it's, if you don't, I've learned this a long time ago. If you don't have a good day today, it's nobody's fault but yours. So put on a smile. Go forth that I have been redeemed. Love the Lord. Love your family. Love your neighbor. Amen. Love the lost. And go tell someone what Christmas is all about, that God has sent to us a Redeemer. God bless you. It's been a joy coming to you today and a great honor. Have a wonderful day. Amen. We'll join back together again tonight. God bless you. Bye-bye now.